Welcome here. One fundamental thing for a video game is that you can, as the player, interact directly with the game at hand. There are multiple devices that can give you input and act as an interface between the player and the game. This video tutorial will give you a brief guide how to do that in Game Maker Studio. Wild ones like electronic guitars, bongos or playing with ice cream, Leech of Legends, well, these won't be the focus of this basic tutorial. This is Wana Bindi, I am the developer of the indie game Clunky Souls and the programmer slash pixel artist. So if you are new here and you want more, consider subscribing to my channel because I upload every two days a video. So let's start with the most common devices for PC games, the good old keyboard and mouse. Here you see a rough keyboard layout with the most important keys. Depending on your country, there are some minor differences. So, if you are in the United States, you have your Y on the bottom center like shown here. Or if you're having a German keyboard, well, you have your Y and Z swap. Plus, there is no control button. We have STR, which stands for STRG, but this is basically the same key. Or a Kyrillic keyboard has lots of more characters in total. So how does Game Maker handle those differences? Well, there are constants like shift, enter, backspace and others. They have a specific name which starts with VK, which I guess stands for virtual key. Here is a list of all of them, but they can be found in the manual under keyboard input. And there are characters which can be accessed with this little extra function ORD. These strings you have to use in capital letters and quotes. Now that you know how they are called, you have three options how to track the input of keyboard strokes. A constant check if a key is being pressed by keyboard check or one time press which is being triggered only when it's, when it's pressed and can only be resetted when the key has been released. And one final one which is kind of similar, a one time check again but now if the key has been released. These three have different applications. Imagine this, the player needs to go right and that is a constant check. So keyboard check is best here. Need a menu, keyboard check pressed or keyboard press released are what you need. Same principle goes for the mouse and the gamepad input, but that I'll show you later. What you need to know is that Game Maker executes these three functions and then returns a true or a false or 0 or 1, which is basically the same. Why is that important to know? Well, with that knowledge armed, you can control the action with a specific input. Here is an example. Just imagine this, you have this little player in your room and you want him to move on the keystroke to the left or to the right. So we just go into our player and we want to do something, but for now, for example, this code would mean that he would be constantly moving to the right side, which we don't want. So we just go for keyboard check and then we have to input a key. So depending what you want to do, for example, we can go for VK, let's say right, we have that now. But for now, this would, for example, only do a check and this would be kind of useless for us. So we just store it into a variable. We call that for example right. And that right thing as you can see is now yellow. And then we can for example do an if clause and if is being one then we go to the right. I will just explain this code um, what it actually means. So if you are pressing the right button on your keyboard this variable would be 1. So for example it says is it 1 then move to the right. For example if I would stop pressing it it would go 0 and then this if clause just would go for go because well this thing is 0. So for example you want to go left so we can do a similar thing we go and make a new variable and call it left. Maybe we want to use the WASD movement. So for example we go or D and then we put in in quotes our let's say what is it a and you have to go with capital letters for example if you're using one then you use this one that for example if you would be using a small not uppercase um, a then it wouldn't be working so we have to go 
for this little string and then of course we can do a similar code like this copy our left and ask if it is one and if it is one go minus and let's start the game and it should work so we press the right button and it works we press the left one and it works as well but we can for example press those things all together and now you cannot decide if it's left or right so that is the thing you have to well adjust a little bit but that is just a, a very very basic tutorial so this is the check function which is constantly checking but for example if what if you want to clone your little player so for example you could go if mouse check and now not just button but button pressed or released that doesn't really matter in my opinion so and here we need a constant and because well we need um, the mouse button so we go MB left mouse why is it not working MB left here we go I don't know the auto correction was bugging um, and now we can do something because for example you can go instance create and we just duplicate this guy so we just go for mouse X because that's the coordinate of the mouse on the screen and mouse Y and now we need to go for the layer we want to put it in and this is instances that is just the layer here for our instances and what do we want to copy well this guy over here we just copy him in and then we would just be creating one per left mouse button for example if you would be just going for a mouse button that would be gone we would be creating 60 instances per second which is quite a lot and that is why you have for example different kind of well applications for different kind of styles and as you can see it works pretty nice and well you can spam that in here now we enter the second most used device for video games the gamepad slash controller here all the keys are already mapped as constants because there's no real difference concerning the input buttons there are a few differences to note on how many you can use at the same time for windows you have two standards which is the microsoft x input standard and the other the direct input standard the x input allows to use at the same time for xbox controllers or ones that support the x input standard the direct input are all the other devices and there can be eight of these which is a total of 12 devices mac os users are limited to four but to be completely honest games that have more than four players on one pc are extremely rare so this is how it works Game Maker checks constantly if the gamepad is being connected and gives the gamepad a slot, starting with zero, counting upwards. This is very neat because you can disconnect and swap devices on the fly when the battery is low or an additional player joins the game. Here is an example. And now we're gonna do the same but this time with the gamepad. I already have it connected and we're gonna go left and right and if you don't know the, well, the keys they are just here under um, controls and then game input and for example for the keyboard you have those inputs here and there all the keys are being shown and I just want well to use the gpad DL so the pad on the left and the pad on the right so we can go from left to right and the other ones are just similar they are just having different constant names and this is how we can use them so for example we go for not a keyboard check but this time a gamepad button check and this is a constant check as well so for example this is good for the movement and here it says we need a device which is zero because this is our first and only device which we have connected and we need a button index and that is the G GPPRDR or something like that I don't know um, this is this constant and again we can do that for the other check and that would be the left one 
and now we can start the game again and as you can see I can move I'm not using the keyboard I'm using my gamepad so maybe you can hear that um, yeah and I'm just drawing like for example um, how many gamepads are active and for example if I connect the second one it should be there as well let's see if it is active or inactive yep it's active and that is the thing you can check for example with gamepad is being connected and then you refer to its position because this is position zero and this is position one and you can just hot swap them if you like for example disconnect one connect one and they will be uh, registered and game maker which is kind of nice so this is just saying all right are you connected draw this text if you're not connected draw this text very very easy stuff nothing special about that and maybe a few things you can uh, well, check the one thing is if it's connected because sometimes there could be some issues or for example you can um, say all right how many gamepads are actually connected and then you just go gamepad get device count and then it will just return how many gamepads would be there and then it would be of course two and the other and last thing which is the most fun one is this bugger here so um here you need to our device which would be zero again and then you apply it left motor and right motor and these things are between zero and one one being a full um well rumbling and the and zero would be no rumbling so for example if you want to do a rumble or a vibration of your game controller this is how you would do it then you just apply that and for example go to one and completely rumble that thing let's check it out i hope it's not too loud if i do that let's see if it does work yeah and it's rumbling all the time because well it has no stopper then you maybe should stop that so this is this is it this is the very very basic on how you can control your game and how those devices are playing into that and of course there are more devices like there are some um, well device inputs or gesture inputs which is just for tablets and and well phones and stuff but that is a little bit more complicated and not part of the basic tutorial hopefully that was useful to you have a good one one up indie.